Jeff, it's great to have a chance to sit down with you a little bit today here at the, by the way, beautiful headquarters. Thank you. Well, Charlotte. Yeah. Place smells so new. It, it was almost <laughs> like it probably went up during COVID when nobody was going into work. That's right. No, thank you for, for being here. It's uh, it's a great building and uh, we're very proud of it for many reasons. It's a great place to work and it's packed with all of our latest and greatest building technologies. This company is, is a company in a major transition and transformation itself. I walk around this, this EBC or a briefing center here and you're looking at, you know, the words like software, transformation, IoT, major secular and disruptive trends. And I don't often think the market and the world really appreciates that. They kind of see Honeywell as more of an older and big industrial conglomerate. Talk a little bit about that shift and maybe what is, why is the market missing this? It's all about building on the great company that Honeywell was at the time, but moving it into the future. And we've been spending lots of money, lots of time, inventing and developing new products and new technologies that are all about um, helping our customers in a, in a connected world, helping take advantage of the unbelievable amounts of data that are now being collected by all these connected devices, helping customers with their ESG and sustainability goals. We're very active in all of those areas. Quantum computing uh, is another you know, area that we've been very involved in. So um, we are really in the middle of this incredible transformation and it's, it's very fun to be a part of. Yeah, it's a great example, uh, what's now Quantinuum, but the amount of, of, of investment and development that went in. Honeywell, quantum computers, I mean, really? I, but at the same time, really? I mean, you think right. about industrial controls and, and how a quantum computer really works, Honeywell was a really well fit to help lead that and had some great success and now is the largest shareholder uh, right. in Quantinuum. How are the customers reacting to this transformation? Because you know, you used to talk about materials and supplies and, and, and buildings, and now you're talking to them about data and mm -hmm. software. Um, the conversations are shifting. Is it being appreciated? Um, our customers do know, and it's been fascinating to see how they've adopted our technologies and worked with us on some of our innovations over the last couple of years. One of the fascinating things that happened during COVID is, you know, our customers face new challenges. So our industrial companies and customers, for example, um, found themselves in situations where they couldn't get their workers on site. And so we had to accelerate all of the remote uh, control and autonomous control of industrial plants. It's something we were working on anyway, but all of a sudden the demand for that technology took off. And we have similar examples around connected buildings and um, really in all the end markets we play, the demand for the technologies and products we were already working on accelerated massively. E-commerce, obviously that took off during um, during the pandemic and has continued, that has created an unbelievable demand for automated warehouses and distribution centers. And again, that's an area we were already participating in, but all of a sudden our demand skyrocketed you know, as a result of what was going on in the world. So we've really seen this acceleration of the adoption of all of these technologies that are all data and, and connected related. I wanna to pivot to one more topic here though. I wanna talk about sustainability and ESG. It seems like that's become a really near and dear topic to the heart of the organization. And, and by the way, all the tech industry's desires to meet these goals, these carbon neutral goals in 2030 and 2040, they're coming to you. They are. And it's, it's, an, it's another area that has really exploded in terms of its, um, in terms of its demand and, and our customers' interest in talking to us about ways we can help them, as you said. But in addition to that, we're investing heavily in technologies that can help our customers with their journey. And uh, you know, one of the factoids that I like to share that not a lot of people realize is um, over 50% of our R&D money is spent developing products and technologies that are ESG related. So over half of our R&D investment is going into this area um, to develop solutions to help our customers. And so it's a huge focus of us. We're putting our, our money behind that focus. And we have a lot of existing technologies that we've actually had for a while that are now all of a sudden getting market adoption. So um, sustainable aviation fuel is an example of that, where you know, we, we invented that and we invented eco-fining to, to produce those fuels. And we've had it for a long time, but only recently has it really taken off in terms of demand. And we have a lot of other existing technologies around carbon capture and technologies that can help um, refiners switch their operations. These companies are, have spent a lot of time under a lot of pressure. And of course, there's a lot of willingness. They want to do good for the world. That's right. But at the same time, it's not easy. So there's the first part for many companies, which is the declaration. That's right. This is what we're going to do. And then there's the second part that 
they have to go back in, in the boardroom and governance and throughout the organization. How are we going to do this? These are hard problems. They are. That's right. And so just how big of an opportunity do you think this is for Honeywell? It's huge because as you rightly point out, it's one thing to say you want to be carbon neutral and you want to reduce, reduce or eliminate your emissions. But technology is the way in which you do that. It's not, as you rightly point out, it's not just a statement and an intention that results in that. It's technology that results in that. And some of the technologies exist today, as I've, as I've stated, and you know, Honeywell is, is a leader in those technologies. Other technologies are being developed today. And you know, we're um, one of the leaders in developing new technologies in that area. So it's a huge uh, passion area for us as a company and for me personally because we're very well positioned already to help customers uh, in this area, uh, but we're also investing in, in what's next, and it's gonna be technology that enables the world to achieve that carbon neutrality. Which is precisely why there's an opportunity for Honeywell to not only be recognized for its strength in industrials, but really its strength as an innovator and a company that's heavily invested in R&D and attaching to these secular trends like ESG goals and sustainability. Jeff, thank you so much for taking some thank time. Thank you, really appreciate it, thank you.